364, 365. Oh, didn't notice you there. I was just hanging out with my friends. Like and subscribe. Oh, they hurt. I'm doing so many. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just screwing you guys. After the uh, unexpected response of my last video, I could not help myself. But anyway, guys, what's up? Uh, Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah, uh, yes, List Day. And today we're continuing my, uh, remake series of my best and worst of the extra deck summoning mechanics in celebration of master rule five five four twenty revision whatever the hell you want to call it now that our special purple white and black cards are no longer beholden to those sneaky blue cards we can actually look at these cards again and say hey they're not all bad uh like they were before because they're actually worth summoning again or uh, at least the good ones are. There's still some bad ones, regardless of whether it's Master Rule 4 or 5, and we're gonna be looking at the worst of the XC monsters. I'm really excited for this one because uh, XCs are my favorite extra deck summoning mechanic. Everyone seems to really like the synchro ones a lot, and they're cool. I like the aesthetic of the white card, but there is something really, really attractive about a black card with a big, thick attack power. However, the next 10 cards you're about to see are not any of those. So uh, without screwing around too much, let's just get into it with number 10. Number 10 is number 85, Crazy Box. Crazy Box uh, is actually probably my favorite card on the list, despite the fact that it is objectively bad. And that's just because um, its effect is fun and it does have a decent attack power, though it doesn't use it very well. This dark rank 4 fiend monster made of two level 4 monsters has the following effect. This card cannot attack. Oh, yes. So that 3k attack power gets put to no use unless you have something like skill drain on board. And then in which case this thing is just a big beater. Which, uh, actually it had been used like that previously. That isn't good. You can just do that. But, uh, what does it do? Once per turn as an ignition, you can just detach a material to roll a six-sided die, and then the effect resolves depending on the result of the die. Number one, half your life points. Ooh, critical failure. Two, draw a card. Three, your opponent discards a card. Four, negate the effects of a face-up card on the field. Nice, it doesn't even say monster, it says just card. Okay, five, destroy a card on the field. Nice, doesn't target. Six, destroy this card. <laughs> oh, okay. You'd almost never want this thing to destroy itself, unless maybe, of course, it was Master Rule 4 and it was stuck in the extra deck zone. And having your life points is almost never good, uh, unless you're playing a cheesy reverse burn deck of some kind in which you need to lower your own life points to get, like, that life equalizer card live or whatever. That's a bad strategy, though. But even though that four out of the six results are technically positive results, three of which are actually positive card advantage, it still makes the card bad. Why? Well, because you can't rely on any of them. One must remember the rank 4 XC card pool is almost entirely reactive. But most of the time, if you're making a rank 4 play, you're making it to solve a problem that's currently on board. And Crazy Box is not going to let you do that because you cannot reliably use its effect. Your luck, instead of getting rid of the card that's stopping you from making your plays, you're gonna draw a card. Or make your opponent discard a card. You're not gonna get it to do what it is that you need it to do in order to solve the problem you're making it for. You can't rely on the card. It's random chance. Although the artwork's cool, it looks kind of like a, like a Borg cube. I am Locutus of Borg. But anyway, let's keep going. Number C43, High Manipulator of Souls. Uh, this is gonna be one of quite a few C number monsters on this list because for some weird reason, the C monsters aren't very good a lot of the time. What's a C number monster? Well, uh, I don't really know the anime lore behind them. I, I think they're evil versions of the number, I don't know. However, the way they're intended to work is you make the regular number monster and then you use a rank up magic card to then like Chaos 6C summon and slap this thing over it so that it then has its own effect plus the bonus effect it gets for having its un-C version as material. Most of them can be made like a normal exceed card, but they gain a bonus effect if they have their non-C version stuck under them. Cool, and the only way to do that traditionally is with a rank up magic card. 
So we look at C43 and see that he's made of four level three dark monsters. We can probably not count that too heavily against him because you're probably never making it like that. So instead, we're going to assume the summoning condition is whatever the normal 43 is plus a rank up magic, which is three level two dark monsters. Ugh. Regular number 43 is not very good and he is semi not a generic which is just an extra point against him plus he's three level two dark monsters not just two level two dark monsters which is even harder to make plus you need the rank of magic card to go into the c so now that we've established that c number monsters with their previous form material are a pain in the ass to make was his effect worth it no. All tokens you control can attack twice during the battle phase. <laughs> what? It says during each battle phase, so if for some reason you have more than one, there's always that, I guess. If this card has the regular number 43 stuck to it, it has a second effect. You can detach a material from it to summon a token. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Its attack and defense are equal to half of your opponent's current life points, so if it's early in the duel, that's a big token. That can attack twice. The effect is bad. It a lot needs to go right for it to work. Uh, it requires you a lot of resources, and at the end of the day, you're just getting a humongous, humongous token. And just because Big Number can attack twice, doesn't mean you're going to OTK with it, although you, you might have a chance. It just really doesn't seem worth it. You had to spend almost every resource at your disposal in a broken opening hand just to make this dumb thing, and you better hope your opponent couldn't stop any of it. Number eight is Unformed Void. We're like unformed strategy <laughs> three level four monsters ew this light aqua <laughs> weird with zero attack and zero defense has the following effect during your opponent's main phase quick effect you can detach a material from this thing and his attack power and defense power become the total attack power of all of your opponent's xc monsters combined ah yes oh man this just screams like early xc like anti xc support kind of thing this happens in every new mechanic where we get a card that's like uh if your opponent's using all of the new stuff do this and get big number or something it's not even good when that's all anyone's even playing much less any format afterwards when we start getting newer stuff because like nowadays sure we don't have to play link monsters but there's still some really good link monsters they didn't get any worse so we probably still have like appaloosa and other things on board plus RXC monsters. So this thing is just, if it's not going to get negated, it's not going to get that much attack. It gets worse and worse as time goes on. Also, it's made of three monsters. Like, going neg two for big number is not very good. It has no self-protection. Its typing is super weird. Its artwork's neat, and I'm unsure if you can rank up into it. You might be able to. It's a lot of these XCs where it has weird typing like that, there's some weird way to get to it from a lower guy. Again, I don't know why you would, though. Number seven, CXC, CXC, CXYZ. I've never spoken this out loud. Dark Fairy Cheer Girl. Man, the artwork on this card is cool. Why they gotta stick a bad effect on her? <sighs> My waifu. <laughs> this Dark Fairy, go figure, is a rank five made of three level five monsters, although that's probably not how you're making it. Again, it's a C monster. We're probably going to assume you're ranking up into it. She's not a number, so that's why she's that CXC thing as opposed to C number, so, because the original one's not a number. That's why she got a weird naming convention. Anyway, when this card is sent from the field of the graveyard, draw a card, nice. I guess you can link it away. If it's got regular fairy cheer girl stuck under it, what does it do? When this card destroys one of your opponent's monsters by battle and it remains on the field, so I guess it can't die during the battle, you can detach a material from it to inflict 400 damage to your opponent. She's got 2,500 attack, so she probably could kill something. There's a lot of not worth it going on here. These guys, all these bad XC monsters are just plain expensive to make for, like, no reason. Ugh. I'm assuming it was an early attempt at overbalancing the XC monsters. It's the only thing I can think of. What's even worse is regular Fairy Cheer Girl is probably better. Sure, she's at rank 4 that's not quite generic, you can only make her with fairies, but you detach a card to draw a card. Like, you don't need to lose the monster. That's really neat. But anyway. C88 Gimmick Puppet Disaster Leo. Uh, talk about Big Number. Now this one's probably the weirdest sea monster on the list because remember when I told you uh, we're not gonna really look at what its materials are, requirements are because you really would never make it? This one, you actually can't. This 3500 humongous Big Number is made of, what is it, four? Four level nine monsters. Now that's 
really awful. You'll never do that. However, must be special summoned with a rank up magic card and can't be special summoned other ways. So then why, if you can't actually exceed summon it legitimately, does it even have materials listed? Anyway, what does it do? You have to rank up from number 88 gimmick puppet of Leo. Okay, and it cannot be targeted by card effects. Okay, so at 3500 and untargetable, that is actually fantastic. It's, that's like your ultimate falcon levels of annoying boss monster. So why is it even on a list of bad exceeds? Well, it mostly comes down to the fact that uh, it's a pain in the butt to make. It requires a lot of resources because like gimmick puppet of Leo is a three level eight rank eight monster, not a two level eight in a questionably competent rank 8 deck like Gimmick Puppets already. And in a lot of ways, I think maybe Gimmick Puppet of Leo is actually better than the C Gimmick Puppet. So once per turn, I can detach a card from this card to do a thousand points of bird damage to my opponent. And during my end phase, if my opponent only has 2k life left, I just immediately win the duel by this card's effect. Okay, so it has an alt win condition. That's cute, I guess, but like, you have a 3500 beat stick that's untargetable and your opponent has less life points than its attack power. You probably won anyway. What are they gonna do? <sighs> okay, and then to my earlier point, Leo also has an alternate win condition. As long as you don't have any cards in your spell or trap card zone, you can detach a material to put a counter on this card, and when it gets three counters, you immediately win the game. It doesn't require your opponent to have some sort of specific life points in order to win. He still has a massive attack power of 3200, and, you know, frankly, with, like, hand traps and other monster effects, you could probably protect him for three turns. It's probably easier to win with Leo than it is with Disaster Leo. By alternate win condition. All right, top five, here we go. Shining Elf. This rank two spellcaster that's a wind for some reason and not a light, despite the fact that its name is Shining Elf, is one of the most oppressive, disgusting floodgates we have in the game and should immediately be banned. Because this card says, when your opponent normal or special summons a monster, detach a material from this card. That monster that your opponent summoned, it loses 500 attack power. I knew that was gonna be a shitty story. This is an older card, clearly, uh, from the early XC days. I think the idea was that they thought, hey, if level 1 and level 2 monsters are bad, then the XCs of a similar rank should also be bad. But that's, uh, dumb. Because even in that point of the game, like, with our main deck monsters, and even our synchro monsters, and fusions for that matter, a monster's level has very little to do with the ability of its effect and how strong the effect of the card is. It's mostly more based on its attack and defense spread, if anything else, kinda. And even at that, a lot of monsters' levels just seems kinda random. Like, why is this a 5 and not a 6? I don't know. Why is it a 4 and not a 3? Because four makes it better? We made it a nine, just so blue eyes won't play it. Like, like, it's more of a game balancing mechanic than it is anything else. But no, apparently they thought like rank twos and rank ones should be bad. So yeah, it doesn't even, it, it's, it's 1600. It's at least kind of a modest attack power for a level two. You know what I mean? But I would never make this in Paleo Frogs. One of these days I'm going to like get a new binder like one of these things and actually like get all of the number monsters because I think that'd be kind of cool. What color binder would it be? Because I've already got these things color coded for like Xyz, Lynx, and Synchros and stuff because I'm um, OCD like that. I, I'm diverging from the topic because there's nothing to talk about because Gold Rat is just, it's bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. Three level ones. Why is it made of so many? Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to draw a card and then shuffle a card from your hand into your deck. They wouldn't even just let you get a raw draw. Why? Because Piper, Turbo, Too Strong, Exodia. Wait, is that why? I don't know, but like, that's really bad. Like, why can't we just have a really, really, really strong level one deck? Like every once in a while, you can kind of like, cheese together a fun wombo combo deck out of level ones but it's never gonna be men it's always some rogue wombo gibberish but it's like why can't we have a cool level one deck like that would be neat like all these like little weak monsters that like do stuff but we can't for some reason piper turbo too strong <laughs> all my burning abyss homies i'm about to give you the secret tech for the format battle cruiser dianthus Dian dianthus this earth plant, this is a plant? <laughs> Just realizing that now. <laughs> Space plant, three level three monsters. Oh, that three level anything is just really rough, but okay, let's do. 
Detach a material, inflict 200 damage to your opponent for every card in your hand. I told you, secret tech of the format. Instead of going into Bar Bar, why would you need to use Bar Bar? You can just waste all the Burning Abysses in your hand. You got more tour guides now. You just go into this thing, detach, time, time in the round. I knew that was gonna be a shitty story. That's its best function too. Ah. I wonder if there's a dumb thing you can rank up from this thing though, because plant is weird. That's like the only cool thing about these really weird low rank XC monsters is that sometimes like with like uh, astral force or something, you could just rank up into like the weirdest tech option. And that's always kind of neat, but it's, it's made of three level three monsters. That's that's already, you're, you're not gonna waste the time and then put a rum card on top. No, you're not doing that. All for some burn, which is totally relying on your opponent having a full hand to do anything serious. And you're probably playing it late game, game three, towards the time in the round when they have no hand. Wow, I'm spending too much time on a card that's not worth it. Let's go. Let's keep, just keep, just keep going. On the Discord pinned the list for my final review in the list help channel, uh, they showed me this guy here, Ten Archduke, at number two. And my first inkling was, hey, that's a rank four. That automatically makes it better than like everything on the list because rank fours are good. There's lots of decks that can easily spam level fours to make rank fours. It's probably the most versatile, useful, and well-supported level in the entirety of the game. Uh, but yeah, you'd never run this though, and literally all of what I just said uh, is should enforce that there is a million other reasons why you shouldn't do this. Three level four monsters. Stop it. You would never do that! It's so hard to do that! Okay. Once per turn during either player's turn. Holy shit, it's a quick effect. You can detach a material. Oh, here we go. Tornado Dragon. I got your number right here. Target one monster. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking it. Change its battle position. <laughs> oh. I knew that was gonna be a shitty story. It doesn't even put it face down. Like, if it was a Book of Moon, maybe it'd be okay. It still wouldn't be great because it's made of three level fours. I could see it being used early in the X era just because, you know, we didn't have like that kind of easy removal like Castell. So putting something face down is a good way of turning its effect off. <laughs> but now it, it just, it just changes its position. Although it does have the common decency to tell you that flip effects aren't activated. So if you're putting that man eater bug in attack mode, ooh, got him. Shit, all's are meta. This is the perfect, perfect anti meta deck choice. <laughs> Before we get to number one, though, I do have a dishonorable mention, uh, because in the last time I did this list, I had some people complaining about this card, because, uh, I don't know, they've never played in a tournament or something, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, number 44, Sky Pegasus, or as I like to call it, Neg Peg. This rank four, generic, Beast Light has the following effect. Once per turn, you should just play Castell, because why the hell wouldn't you? Okay. Fine. Once per turn, you can detach a material, target one face-up monster in the field, destroy that monster. Whoa, wait, what? That's fantastic removal. Why am I saying this is bad? Unless your opponent pays a thousand life points to negate this effect. Um, imagine your opponent is able to negate your neg one play, and they don't even need to use a resource to do it. Like, if you played this card, your opponent's like, oh man, I don't want to solemn strike that. That's not worth it. And you know what? It's not because it actually costs them less light points just to, <laughs> to use its own ability to stop it from working. That's so bad. Your opponent needs no setup to stop this thing. You have a thousand other better options. I will concede though, it's only an honorable mention because in theory, I don't know if this was actually true or not, but in the early days of Xyz, when we didn't have a lot of options, this was probably okay, cause like, it's a thousand burn damage more than anything else, unless your opponent is down to very low life points. And it says pays, so it's like a cost, so I think if your opponent has less life points than a thousand, I don't think they can opt to negate it, so then it's just a free destroy. Or is it? Let's just burn them to death. Uh, if it burned them to death, then they're just not going to do that, they're just gonna let you kill their stuff, so you can't even like, cowboy for game with it, even if you can, I'm not sure you can, but even if you could, you can't. Or you won't. And then the other time, when your opponent has more than a thousand life points, they're not gonna let you kill their stuff! And then only at 1800 attack, it's it's not exactly going to then proceed to run over whatever it is it's trying to get rid of. Unless you have honest. Neg peg. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. 
Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout, you can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. It's very fitting that number one is also a rank one. Number 63, Shimoji Shoulder. Shimo, Shimo, <laughs> Number 63, Shimoji Shoulder. Money Penny. Uh, man talk. Uh, of all the impressions I can do, Sean Connery is not one of them. Shimoji Soldier. Oh, that's weird to say. That's why it's number one. Impossible to pronounce. There we go. Anyway, guys, them. Two level one monsters. Oh, thank God. At least it's not made of three material. You can only use this effect once per turn. Nice. Detach a material and then pick one of these two effects to do. Number one, at the start of your opponent's next standby phase, each player draws a card. Nice. You're still minus one for making the thing. Or two, each player gains a thousand life points. It's really weird that that might be the better of the two because you, there are decks that care about life point levels, like Arrow Mage. Although I don't know how you'd make this in that deck. Okay, again, just because you can doesn't mean you should. It's 2k booty is not doing it too much to keep it on the board because that's not really that big anymore. It, it used to be back in 2001. But uh, yeah, uh, no. It's like the slowest one day of peace ever. That That is just so, so rank. Eh? And now that we're like, you know, three eras later, we have plenty of rank ones that are actually worth making. We just need a deck to make them in. So this thing is like way, way old school, way power creep. Despite the fact that it's probably one of the easier ones to make on this list, it uh, it's insulting and just really, really not worth it. But anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed this one. This one's fun because like I said, I really like Xyz. I just think it's the most fun, logical progression for Yu-Gi-Oh! there is. Because it's like, you know, when you look at like how we got from like two monsters and a spell and then just two monsters but one's a tuner and now just they just gotta be the same level and you don't worry about it. Like it's, it's this nice flow of the game. I really like that. And then it gets crazy after that. But I really liked, I really liked Xyz. I just like the way they work. It makes, they made a lot of old decks like Harpies like actually kind of work better and things. Gives them a purpose. That was cool. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I will see you guys. Oh boy. Uh, do we move on to Lynx or do we do Pendulums? Do Pendulums even count? I mean, I don't even think I did it the first time. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!